and from you know secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Share abroad this gift throughout the earth by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from Ezekiel. <clears throat> the hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley, which was full of bones. He led me all around it. There were many, very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. <clears throat> then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattle, and the bones came together, bone to each bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied, prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came to them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. You shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read from Psalm 104 uh, in unison. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works, in wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures, yonder the great and wide sea, with the living nations of men each in number, creatures of both great and small. There are the ships, and there is that the light of them, which you have made for the support of them. All of them look to you, to give them their food in the new season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You set them forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine be sin. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah.
a reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, and the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with a new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smokiness. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And they were all amazed and 
perplexed. They were puzzled. They were surprised. Life is full of surprises, isn't it? And for all of those gathered on that 50th day of the Harvest Festival called Pentecost, there were so many different surprises in store for those who were there. The entire book of Acts tells the story of the community's slow opening to the breadth of God's plan. But today's portion focuses on the more dramatic elements, such as the large numbers in the crowd who heard the message of God's sign and wonders each in their own different language. The exact opposite of the confusion of the Tower of Babel. And we know from Paul's letters that it was not easy for the disciples to adjust to the fact that the Spirit works through each individual believer, whether Greek or Jew, slave, free, woman or man. Knowing how much they would have to grow Jesus forewarned them that they had much to learn, but they would only be able to hear it when guided by the Spirit of Truth. John's Gospel account depicts Jesus breathing the Spirit on the disciples on the day of resurrection, not with the surprising signs of fire and speech, but with a simple puff of Christ's breath and by his command to forgive and pardon one another in his name. Even though the accounts vary, they do agree on one central truth concerning the key work of the Spirit in our lives today. That is to bring about change dreaded word. But Pentecost is all about change. Change has already happened. Jesus is gone. And the changes will be ongoing. They will struggle with pressures from outside and inside their, their fellowship. Some will want to bring in newcomers. But they will not be happy with the changes that newcomers might bring. They'll attempt to carry on the way they think Jesus would want them to, and sometimes they'll fail. They'll work to be inclusive, but not always successfully. They'll argue about the best way to go on. Sound familiar? Since one of the most recent features of our Pentecost celebrations have come to focus on different languages, as you just heard, Let's consider how the Spirit might work in the language we use. Among the very first glimpse of language or words spoken by God in the book of Genesis are the four simple words, let there be light. It follows then that as God's children, all our words should also be sources of light. Words have power. Whether they're our body language, our spoken or written words, the words we type or tap into our emails, tweets, and Facebook, our words have power. Power to invite, build up, and include power to knock down, repel, and attack. We may not be able to speak in strange tongues or different languages as in the Acts of the Apostles, but our words do have the potential to welcome and embrace others, or to exclude and discriminate because of some perceived difference. The way we speak to one another, or about one another, it's very important to us in our mission as those who are given the gift of the Spirit in Holy Baptism. As we renew our baptismal vows in a few minutes, the words we speak 
will affirm our calling to be children of light who want to be, who want to follow Jesus. We are the community of witnesses Jesus has left in the world to invite others to live in that light and love that surprised the disciples on that day of Pentecost long ago. Our surprise gift on this day of Pentecost, in this time of reopening and rebooting our community and our life as the people of God, our gift is a gift of something special to say, a word to speak in the brokenness and pain of the world that is unlike any other word. Did you notice that what happened to those that gathered on that day the Spirit was given? That community of believers came alive and they spoke. They moved from silence to language. They talked and the whole world heard the good news in its own languages. As the prophet Joel had foretold, in those latter days I will pour out my Spirit on all humanity and your sons and your daughters will have a word to speak. So what is that word that we have been given? That life is stronger than death, that hope is deeper than despair, that every tear will be dried, and that in the power of Christ's resurrection, death and pain will be no more. That word is now ours to speak in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Dear people of God, on this day of Pentecost, the Church calls us to celebrate the gifts of the Spirit, and as a sign of our baptism in the Spirit, calls on us to renew our baptismal vows and reaffirm once again the promises which bind us to Christ and to each other. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of the Lord, who is the same by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, and thank you to everyone for joining, joining us this morning on this day of Pentecost. I have a couple of exciting announcements this morning. Next week, Sunday, May 30th, is Trinity Sunday, which has always been a special day of celebration for our parish, and this year it will be extra special. First, in celebration of our name day and of the 202nd year of Trinity's ministry in downtown Easton, we will be offering cupcakes to any parishioners and members of the community who stop by after our 9.30 service. Cupcakes will be distributed in individual containers in front of the church on Spring Garden Street from about 10.30 after the service until around noon or as long as the cupcakes last. Uh, so, that's the first one. And I hope that we'll see some of you stopping by to get those cupcakes. The second announcement might actually make it easier for you to stop by to get the cupcakes because we're thrilled to announce that um, next week we will have our long awaited return to in person worship as we open our doors to the congregation for our 9 30 service. We do have to follow some guidelines set out by the diocese. So for now, we are limited to 50 people uh, and so that we can maintain distancing if people are from different households. And masks must be worn in the church. Also, you must register in advance to come. So please, you can do this on Realm as we did in the summer, or you can call the parish office on Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we need this to keep track of the number of people who will be present. Also, if you decide Friday night after church office is closed that you wanted to come to church and you never registered, feel free to call me or email me and I will make sure that your name is on the list. And finally, when you come to church, you will enter through the front door and we'll exit at the side door. So, let's see. Oh, one more thing. Please know that we will continue to live stream our services on Facebook for those who can't be in here, here in person. And so, have a great day. Have a blessed week. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Let us present the offering from the blessings of our life and labor to the Lord.
and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, O Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks. 